my name is Dino Gamer Pay, and welcome back to Mystic Destinies. Now, we're going on to chapter three. Um, and so far, we met a new character. I can't remember his name, but it's a blue hair creep. And we met our dad. And now we're going into the next chapter with a new mission, which is to figure out how we can help our dad with the corporate or with this business deal. Anyhow, before we start, I just want to say Happy New Year's, and I'm so excited for 2017, but at the same time, I'm terrified. <laughs> With that, this is starting. Uh. At my room now, I gratefully wrap myself in my bed covers. The whole ride back, I couldn't stop thinking about it. About her. Ooh, it's pretty outside. Sorry. I told Dad that I would be alright, that I'd drink some medicine and go to sleep. Thankfully, he believed my story, but I feel horrible for lying to him about it. No matter how deep I burrow under the covers, I still can't stop shaking. I keep seeing flashes of memories I have worked hard to ignore. Glowing green eyes, the moon hanging up high in the sky, a strange tiny bottle of something and the pain, the excruciating pain along with the darkness that followed it. I try to shake those thoughts away and focus on something, anything else. Eventually, the warmth of the bed and exhaustion of a long day gets to me, and my eyes start to feel heavy. And before I knew it, I fell into a deep sleep. Oh man, it's so pretty outside. I walk down the dark, empty road. My footsteps are too loud in the otherwise soundless night. I know that I need to hurry, or I'll be late. If I'm late, she'll- I notice the lone figure standing at the end of the road. I break out into a run. My legs start to feel heavier with each step, but I keep pushing onwards. I get closer to her, so close that I reach out and almost touch her. I call out to her. Mom! My fingers nearly brush against her shoulder, but my hand is slapped away by an unseen force. Mom? She turns around with a smile. I stand frozen at the sight of green eyes glowing in the darkness. I feel a gentle breeze caress my skin. The pale moonlight dimly illuminates the night. In the eerie silence of the night, I sit on the frozen ground with my back resting against an ancient oak tree. Around me are nothing but endless fields of grass and purple hyacinths. I don't know that flower. Delicate flowers gently sway as it dancing in some vis invisible wind. I try to look around to see if there's maybe something behind the tree. My body is unresponsive. Not not matter, not matter how much I struggle in my mind to get it to move. No, no, please. The sound of footsteps coming closer fills the right the night. She comes into view and stands before me. She looks down at me with unreadable eyes, and for a while, silence reigns. A cold chill seeps into my very bones. I have to move. I desperately try to will my body to move, to do something, anything. She kneels in front of me, finally facing me at, my, my, facing me at eye level. It truly is a shame that it has to be like this. No. She slowly reaches out to me, carefully tucking my hair in between, behind my ear. She gently touches my cheek, so gently that it almost feels like she's afraid that I'm, I would break from a single touch. Her eyes finally meet mine. They shine with countless emotions, pain, grief, regret, and most of all, resolve. She smiles sadly and pulls her hand away from my cheek. As she does, her eyes turn cold again. She covers my eyes with her hand. Her hand feels so warm on my skin. I'm so sno I'm so sorry, Snowy. I can't struggle or even move. No matter how much I try, nothing works. I desperately will myself to speak. M Mom, please. My voice comes out strained, and just saying that makes me feel like a her 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 Herculean or Herculean task. For the briefest of most moments, I could swear that I feel her almost pull away. She doesn't say anything, but I can hear a gentle sigh. Her hand starts to feel hotter and hotter and gets my skin. I can't see, I can't move. A hearing hot pain 
A searing hot pain pierces through my eyes and suddenly it feels as if they're on fire. Ah! I can't move. She moves her hand away. My eyes fly open with but even the dark is gone, I can barely see anything. My vision is blurry with the countless tears that stream down my face. The pain only grows in intensity, and I feel the overwhelming urge to claw them out just, just or out just to stop it. I look up at the blurry figure of Shizuta. Pl please, just st stop! I, I can see her tilt her head to the side, but I can't see her expression. Another stab of pain shoots through me. Ah! My lungs are burning. I can't breathe. Hate to be in this girl's position. I shoot up in bed. Should have been bed. I shoot up in my bed. My whole body feels like it's burning. Each breath makes me feel like my lungs are freezing over. It starts to get harder and harder to take even a single breath. My body shakes as I grip into the bed sheets in some vain attempt to steady myself. No, no, it's fine. It's just a dream. It's not real. Not real. I keep repeating this to myself over and over again to try and stop myself from shaking. I'm not sure how much time passes before it starts to work. The feeling of both burning and freezing finally goes away, and I breathe a sigh of relief. <coughs> a sudden weight of a tiredness washes over me and I yawn. I push any remaining thoughts of my nightmare away and settle back in under the covers. Dude, I don't know if I would be able to sleep after that. As I fall back into sleep, my only thoughts is that I hope for no more dreams. The sunrise, hit, sunrise hits my eyes and I jolt awake. I look around my bedroom with a wildly beating heart. It's okay. It's okay. I'm in my room. I'm alone. It's fine. Everything is fine. I tightly hug my pillow to my body. A cold chill runs through me. It's just a dream. It's just a dream. It's fine. I bury my face into the pillow. Shizuka. I shiver. Even thinking of her name immediately brings back the fear I felt that night into the forefront of my mind. I try not to think of some I try to think of something else, anything at all to distract me and help me forget. I grab my phone to do that just that and immediately notice that there's a new email from Tatsuya. I quickly open it, curious as to what he might be emailing me about. Tatsuya y Yukimura. Hi, since we didn't get a chance to discuss class yesterday, do you want to come over to my mom's cafe and study today? I'll go over with the material I covered in class with you, as well as some beginner stuff whenever I can, Yukimura. His message is short and, and to the point, but just reading his words, knowing that someone was thinking of me brings a smile to my face. I type sure to him. That's... <laughs> okay. I type sure to him without having to even think about it. Having replied, I quickly moved out of bed to getting ready for the day. My phone goes off before I can even reach the bathroom door. I check it again to find an e another email from Tatsuya. This time, it's filled with incredibly detailed directions of where exactly it is I need to go and how to get there. Hmm. Blue Sky Cafe and Chow Chow Sounds nice enough. I scan through the instructions and sometimes ca and something catches my eye. Oh, looks like I have to get to the station first. I've been to that particular station many times before, but I never noticed anything strange there. Then again, all the supernaturals I've seen so far look entirely human. If I, if you disregard the odd hair colors here and there, that's it. With my travel plans all set up, I finally head into the shower to get ready. Why do you look the same every fucking time? You can't just look nice. For whatever reason, I feel more excited than usual about going to beat up. So I ended up getting ready in record time. I jump into my shoes and rush out of my apartment. When I get to the train station, I pull out my phone. I quickly double check where I need to go and what I need to do. In his email, Tatsuya started that there was a special train that will take people to Chowa a, a couple of times a day. He predicted that I would have no idea how to find this train even, so he sent me the full, all by excruciatingly detailed information just for getting a ticket. I walked up to the very last clerk on my right, an older woman with bright electric blue hair sits behind the counter. She looks up at me through the top of her glittery purple frames. I try to lean closer to the counter without appearing suspicious. One ticket to Chowa, please. I say in a low voice. The clerk presses something under the table and a small panel opens in front of me, revealing a marble-like square plate underneath. I stare at it blankly. Erm, um, what am I supposed to do with this again? The clerk chuckles. First time, then? Please place your hand on the marble for a few moments. 
I do as I'm told and place my hand over the cold marble plate. I gasp quietly when the cold stones start to feel hot all of a sudden, and a strange tingle spreads all throughout my body. The once white marble changes to a green one right before my eyes. Uh, the clerk smiles at me without comment and hands me a single ticket. Please enjoy your day, miss. I glance down at my hand and at the marble that turns back to its original color without my touch. I feel like this would have would have been a somewhat strange experience to the previous me, the one who didn't know anything about magic. But I realize that now this has become somewhat routine, probably even more normal than some other things I've seen. With a little nod, I'm on my way to wait for the train. The platform I need is easy enough to get to. There's an already quite a few people waiting around for this particular train, but still less than the usual. Most people here are either glued to their smartphone screen or looking off into the distance from where their train would be coming from. At this moment, while everyone is preoccupied, I casually examine some of them. At first glance, every everyone seems ordinary. I doubt anyone could guess that one of them might not be human. They must all be supernaturals of some sort, right? I don't see anything too weird about them. Then, something catches my eye just for, for just a moment. Wait, did I just see fangs on that man in the suit? No, no way, vampires aren't real, right? While I'm busy with my thoughts, the train finally arrives, right on time. People start boarding the train in a neat line. I stand behind a pink-haired girl and set, get on the train right after her. I find an empty seat and settle in. The train starts to move within moments. Seeing that no one pays me in any mind, I try to look around casually without drawing attention to myself. In the quickly moving scenery, I see nothing out of the ordinary. Did I get on the right train? I look at the ticket in my hand. I'm sure I got on the right one. Doubts start to creep into my mind, but almost immediately I start to realize how silly I'm being. Just because the train is supposed to take me somewhere supernatural doesn't mean the whole trip would suddenly take me through some magical land. With that thought in mind, I lean back in my seat and relax a little. A voice rings out throughout the train, announcing a, tra a track switch. As the train turns, out of nowhere, I feel a jolt of something, like a static shock, run through me. I hold back a gasp of the unexpected feeling. What the hell is that? I look around, trying to see if, it, if we had passed something, but I can't see anything out of the ordinary. Maybe it's just me then. Maybe no one else felt that. I begin to wonder if I just imagined it when the peak hair girl next to me looks at me with a smile. Is this your first time going to Chowla on the train? Yep. How can you tell? It's because your face just suddenly looks so bewildered. The girl giggles as if she just witnessed the most amusing thing in the world. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. I'm Emmy. Emmy Matsuda. I'm, so I'm Snowy Heart. What was it we just passed? Some sort of barrier? Something like that. There's a veil of illusion around Chawa that confuses the human eyes into thinking that they didn't see anything. And that's what we just passed through. Oh, I see. I think back to the strange shimmer that revealed the hidden button in the elevator. I wonder if it's the same thing in Hagiwara too. I mumble to myself, barely above a whisper. Emmy seems to catch on to what I've said despite my quiet tone. Do you go to Hagiwara then? <clears throat> yes, I do, actually. Me too! It's my first year there. My parents wanted me to attend since the first time I showed signs of magic. Hagiwara has some really good classes for mages, so they knew I'd be able to learn a lot. I see, so Emmy is a mage. Unsure about how much to reveal about myself, I smile and hope it doesn't look too awkward. I'm a first year too, so I'm pretty new to everything. Some of the classes there are so wild. Like, have you heard about what happened during one of the Professor Okura's classes last week? No, I don't think I did. Oh, it was so crazy. So during po potions, Professor Okura, who's totally strict, suddenly just decided to lounge on his desk. Like, just lying down all casually on one arm. He started asking questions about potions, but they were random ones. Some were things that haven't even been taught yet, and probably never will. And whenever someone got it right, he threw some candy. Then, when they were wrong, or when they were probably wrong, he'd still throw a candy, but it was at them. I even heard he managed to hit a few people right between the eyes. And that's when the really crazy thing happened. Another professor, Okura, walked in and yelled like, was like, what are you doing to my students? So it turns out that it was Professor Okura's twin who was just messing around with the class. Not even, not, no one even knew that he had a twin, so people were totally shocked. And I hear that look, they look exactly alike too. It's just strange to think of something like that happening in class. But it's oddly comforting to know even in this unfamiliar world there are things that are ordinary enough to happen in normal life too. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. Do things like that ha often happen in Hagiwara? Emmy thinks for a while, and it shrugs at last. 
I don't know. They probably asked one of the older students that. But it did remind me of an episode from Sakura Sparkle Cure. The twins ended up switching places for a whole day and everyone else found out about it in the very end. Oh, I remember that episode. Do you watch Sakura Sparkle Cure then? I love that anime. I haven't even met anyone who liked it too. Really? Yeah, of course I watch it. I love it. It's like the best though. Just the strong friendship that the girls have is so amazing. It's worth watching just for that. I cut I nod along. Yes, and all the magic that they could do is so amazing. Yeah, I know, right? Emmy suddenly sighs and pouts. I wish I could be that good at magic as those girls. I'm not very good at it, so I have to take some re revendable classes through all through all I want to do is to focus on art instead. Oh, I'm not good at it at all myself. Most of the time, I feel like I'm never able to do it properly. <clears throat> Maybe more like almost all the time, really. The train comes to a halt then, and the announcement for Chowa Station comes on. Emmy and I look at each other and smile. We get off from our seats together and move off to get, get off the train together. I walk out of the station with Emmy and the bright sunshine. I'm impressed by the modern buildings surrounding us. Whatever I was expecting, I had never imagined. Uh, I would have to admit it was something a bit more fascinating, fa uh, fantastical, like Harry Morgan's basement. We're still chatting about anime when Emmy squints at something in the distance. Hey, did you have someone waiting for you? No, why? Because there's this guy glaring at us. <coughs> <coughs> I can't believe you forgot. Look over to where she was staring, and sure enough, there are the crowds of people I see Tatsuya. He's staring at us with his arms crossed, completely unheeding of the people swarming around him. Somehow, he looks different than usual, and clothing like it's a little more like, relaxed. He must have come to pick me up. Yukimura? So you know him. Tatsuya walks up to us and we stop. He glances at Emi and then me. Come on. He turns around and starts to walk away. We move to catch up with him and Emi speaks to me in a little voice. Is that your boyfriend? <laughs> yep! No way! Oh, yeah. But no. I can hear you guys, you know, and no, most definitely not. <laughs> well, we're not together by choice. We're just assigned. We're study partners, that's all. <laughs> oh, alright then. No need to freak out about it. Good to hear, though. You were so cold with her that I would have been worried. And exactly who are you? I'm Ami Matsuda. I'm a mage and I'm enrolled over at Hakiwara. Your turn. Tatsuya Yukimura. I study at Hagiwara as well. Yukimura? I look back and forth between Tatsuya and Emi as we walk. Okay, what's up with them? So you're probably pretty hardy with Cyro, right? Cairo, right? Could you teach me sometime? I guess. I'm confused the tension I sense for a moment, but then it evaporates just as fast as it came. Actually, I was going to study with him now. If you have some time and Yukimura's okay with it, do you want to come with us? Yeah, alright. I was just... I was just gonna go shopping for some special art supplies, but I can do that anytime. And that's okay with you, Hikimura. Tatsuya looks back at Emmy and I. He sighs, pushing his glasses up. Fine. <laughs> when he turns back around, Emmy leans in close to me, my ear, and whispers, You know, he'd be even cuter if he wasn't so grumpy. I try my best to stifle a laugh and just barely manage to prefer the snort. He seems like he has good ears, so I better be careful <laughs> about what I laugh at, or he might decide not to teach me at all. As we walk, I remember that Tatsuya said he'd be taking me to his mother's cafe. I start to get a little nervous when I think I might meet his mother. I have to wonder what she looks like, to have raised such a serious son. I guess I'm about to find out. I swear to god, if she is the stereotypical son is very, very, um, you know, serious and she's all bubbly and shit, I'm gonna be a little upset. When we walk in, I take in the bright, open atmosphere and the pleasant smell of breakfast and coffee in the air. I feel immediately at peace in the cafe, and I'm thankful that Tatsuya took, took us here. I think I can get a lot of studying done in a place like this. Tatsuya leads us to the table near the back that's piled high with textbooks. Wow, <laughs> someone's prepared. We sit down at the table, but Tatsuya remains standing. Do you two want anything, drinks or food? Don't worry about paying, either. You're taking our order, Yukimura? Why wouldn't I? This is my mother's cafe. I look away, feeling a bit sheepish. I thought Tatsuya was kind of a jerk, but he takes small kindness as they're just a matter of fact, like coming to pick us up or getting food. 
Tatia's annoyed voice snaps me out of whatever positive thoughts I was having about him, though. So, do you want something or not? Do you guys have omelet omelets? I could go for one of those. Any kind is fine. Oh, and maybe some hot tea. Tatia looks at me. And you? I shake my head. I ate before I left this morning, but I will take some vanilla iced coffee. Hmm. Okay. Tell me about that hmm bothers me, and before he leaves, I stop him. Wait, what was that hmm for? What? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> I just thought that you have pretty good taste. I enjoy iced coffee, too. The flavor is wrong, though. Mocha is a far superior. <laughs> well, not in my opinion. Mocha is disgusting. I don't even know how you can drink it. <laughs> Vanilla is way too sweet. It makes me gag. Are you guys seriously arguing about iced coffee? Tatsuya, really? Are you arguing with customers now? I turned to look over at the owner of the, so uh, of the soft but irritated voice that spoke and see a beautiful blue-haired woman. Uh, no mom. <laughs> no mother. Well, kind of. Not, not quite. Explain now. She's not a customer, she's a friend, and we're, we were here just uh, having a discussion about um, coffee flavors. Coffee flavors. Seriously, seriously Tatsuya? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry if we disturbed anyone. <clears throat> His mother's expression changes in an instant as she starts to giggle. <laughs> okay then. So are you going to introduce me to your friends? This is Snowy Hart. She's the partner I was telling you about. And I'm her new friend, Emmy. Uh, I mean, Matsumura. Nice to meet you, ma'am. Ma'am? Hmm. Do I look that old? N no, ma- Uh, not at all. You look super young, in fact. My name is Chisaki Yukimura. You can just call me Miss Yukimura. Though before Tatsuya even said it, I was certainly- I was certain you were the girl Tatsuya was helping, Snowy. Huh? How? You look exactly like Tatsuya's type. Mother! <laughs> oh my god. This poor guy. His mom's an ass. <laughs> Tatsuya, go ahead and give the girls their order if you would. Yes, mother. Tatsuya moves to go back and Chis uh, Chisaki turns back to us. So what brings you here today? Studying by the looks of it? That's right. It was supposed to be just me today, but Emmy and I met for the first time on the train. I thought Yukimura might know a thing or two about ice magic. That he does. Tatsuya has been training his cryokinesis since he was very small. Probably since he was about three or four. So if you need any help, you can depend on Tatsuya. Tatsuya walks back over to us holding a tray. He passes out the food and drinks with such a casual demeanor that I have to wonder how long he's been helping his mother. Tatsuya takes a seat and Chisaki looks down at him. Be nice to your friends, Tatsuya. And I hope you all have fun. With those parting words, Chisaki moves away so gracefully for a moment that I think she's floating. Tatsuya looks at each one of us. I'm going to start with the basics for Snowy, but I'm warning both of you that I'm not e an easy teacher. Are you ready to start? I think I hear Emmy almost whimper beside me, but I nod seriously. Let's do this. Okay then, we'll start with breathing. Correct, breathing is the first step of summoning your power. When you gain enough experience, it happens naturally. But breathing gets you in a focused mindset which is necessary. We've all been studying for about two or three hours, and it's almost lunchtime. Tatsuya has been trying to teach me how to summon ice. Surprisingly, Tatsuya is a very patient teacher, and he seems used to explaining things in an easy-to-understand way most of the time. However, I still can't do a single thing. Don't worry, Snowy. I know you'll get it. Ah! The cup Emmy was holding in her hand suddenly freezes over, and she drops it in surprise. We watch as the cup bounces off the table and shatters on the floor. Oh, damn it. I don't know what happened there. I'm so sorry. I'll get something to clean it up. Emmy rises, rises out of her seat, but Tatsuya is faster. Don't worry about it too much. At least you're able to get something out of her studies. He walks off before Emmy can say more, and I look down. I know he didn't mean it like that, but why can't I do this? I can't even make the air cooler, much less create actual ice. Well, don't get down, so I've been studying since I was a kid, and I still suck this much. Can't even control what I do sometimes. Sometimes, you're doing great for someone who's only been do studying for a week. Thanks, Emmy. Emmy smiles back at me, but then I see her eyes focus on something in the distance behind us. She smiles even bigger and waves. I turn around to see who she's waving at, and I'm surprised to see that Xiao and Shenji have just walked in. The two men walked over to our table. Hi, Emmy. Hey, Snowy. Emmy. Wow, didn't know you two knew each other. Well, we didn't, not until today. We just met on the train. So you know Snowy too? We both do, actually. 
She's in some of her classes in business club. So how do you know Emmy? Her brother Xiao and I hang all the time, sometimes. Though Emmy usually just draws, so not sure if that could be counted as hanging out. Tetsuya comes back then and gives Xiao and Senji a brief nod. Hey, so it looks like one of one or uh, one of our workers called off today, and my shift was about to begin anyway, so I think our study session has to be over. This sucks about the whole girl calling off, but I have to go anyway. Get going anyway. Gotta go get some supplies. I'll be seeing ya. Thanks for the lesson and food, Yukimura. Snowy, be sure to call me, okay? It was nice meeting both of you. Emmy picks up her things and waves goodbye to us. After she walks out the shop, Tatsuya turns to me. I need to get to work right away, so I'm sorry, but you'll have to make it home by yourself. Tatsuya turns to walk away, but I call out to him. Wait. Tatsuya looks back at me and I stand up, my hand up to my chest. You helped me out a lot today. Can I do anything to help repay you and your mother? No thanks necessary. I was just doing my assignment. For some reason, I feel a little hurt by this and look down. I guess after spending so many hours with him, I thought maybe we were starting to become friends at least. Tatsuya completely tries to face me then and mumbles. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> but nothing less, no thanks is necessary. Besides, do you even have any relevant work experience? It's when he says that, that I realize I'm a burden to him more than anything. Realizing I have nothing to say, Tatsuya starts to leave, but something in me feels frustrated and I grab a hold of his arm. Well, I don't have any experience. I'm not useless. And besides, it's not like you're in any position to turn down help. Fine. I'm not going to repeat myself, so you better be on top of your game. Don't worry about me. I'll, I will be fine. Tatsuya points to a table. Start by seating these two at to the table. I nod and put on a bright smile. Right, this way, guys. What? Ah! Oh! <laughs> Damn. Okay, so we're done. I'm assuming we're done with chapter three. Yeah, I think we're done with chapter three. So, I'll see. Let's see, hold on. I'm just making sure that was the last one. <clears throat> Skip. Go on. Yep, okay, so that's the end of chapter three. I want to make sure, so I'll get back to the story. Um, sometime... <sighs> this is gonna sound stupid, but I, I don't have... <laughs> I'll probably be getting back to this uh, story back in February then. I thought it was one time, like a intro, and then I realized that I actually had to do stuff with the game. Um, yeah, I'll get back to this game back in February, because I actually forgot I had to pay for the rest of the story. It sounds stupid, I know, but I have to get, uh, but that's just how it is. Um, so, February, like, near, it's gonna be there in the fe beginning of February. Um, that's when I'll be able to get back to it. But other than that, I really uh, had enjoyed this story, and I really hope you guys did too. Um, it was actually a really nice introduction to the game. But uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the story just as much as I had. If you liked this video, hit the like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. If you have a comment for me, leave it in the comment section below. And I'll see all you guys in the next video.